lack of time, we'll move on to our next speaker, Dr. Rupa Kanti Biswas, who will be speaking on extra large macular holes and recurrent macular holes. Thank you, Dr. Dabdulal, uh, for this, uh, including me in this, uh, you know, excellent uh, uh, instruction course. So, uh, I know it is early in the morning, and then this, but still, uh, when you know, uh, you are stuck. So you don't know what to do. So then a lot of options comes to your mind. And from there, you choose one of them. So this is, then, th then you, the thought process comes that this is not the end of your road. So it is the beginning of your road, of a multiple roads that opens up. So this is the situation I have faced initially when I had a, started having a failed macular, macular hole. So what, what should be the, you know, this is the volume is coming. Audio? Anyway, I'll just describe. So this is a, this is a routine macular hole surgery. So when you are doing macular hole surgery, uh, standard ILM peeling, adequate amount of the ILM peeling. And most of us usually, if it is less than 400 size of macular hole, usually we do a standard ILM, uh, ILM peeling across the uh, uh, hole. But when you have a little larger size, then you try to do it, you know, uh, inverse flap technique so that your success rate goes up. Definitely, this inverse flap technique helps you for uh, this thing. But when you have a failed, a failed macular hole, then you don't have option other than like this kind of putting a free flap there. So when you have a failed macular hole, either you need to plug this uh, uh, whole area, either with ILM or people have tried with amniotic membrane or lens capsule, but ultimately all of them, all of them are having you know, uh, we have analyzed with the SDOCT that they are actually the scar tissue which is lying there, so which is not actually the retinal tissue. So to, uh, so we thought that why not to do a, you know, something a little bit innovative way. So to put a retinal tissue per se there and see ki how it is happening. So then we, we have designed a special kind of trephine so that you can, you know, take a autologous retinal graft from the, from the other part of the same eye, so which I have chosen from, usually I have chosen, depending on the right eye or left eye, it's the superior part. For the sake of, you know, surgery easier, and you have just refined it, that area. This is the predetermined size of the trephine which I have taken, and then the graft is freed from the underlying choroid. With the help of his, uh, you know, forceps, you can see it very clearly that graft is, uh, uh, you know, taken in a, in a hand. and. Once you take it, you, you have to hold it in that position. And then you do a, this first part, the trephination is done under saline. And then you do a fluid air exchange and place the graft under the air and gently tuck with your silicon tip. The rest of the, uh, silico uh, the, rest of the fluid has been taken out. And this uh, donor side is uh, being lasered. and then put uh, uh, gas, gas component. So let's see key how it is. This is the failed surgery, the above one, the OCT, what it was showing. Can you give me the pointer, please? So, and this is the, this is the graft tissue, which is lying there, which has a little bit of similar kind of retinal architecture. So with this, with this inspiration, we have started going, this is the anatomical success, what we have, we have achieved. Now, how the functionally active of this area so this we did multifocal ERG for these uh, these cases, and you have seen this. This is a significant graft is still, uh, I mean, the spike is we can uh, 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 see, and as because we don't have a microperimetry, so we have gone for this uh, uh, standard visual field test with 10-2, and the central area is showing almost near about 25 to 26 this value, so which is also significantly high. So the graft is functioning actually, and uh, this is a, this is a almost. Uh, uh, three years old data, so we have crossed approximately around 16 cases. And uh, uh, initial phases also, I have a you know, uh, learning curve. So initially, the graft size, I used to take the similar size of the trephine. So then I have realized that there is a, sp uh, a percentage of the shrinkage of the graft which is happening there. So the initial two cases which have the subretinal migration and graft loss because of this. So then I have increased the size of the graft of 15% and the success rate goes up significantly. 
there are other uh, you know surgeons which is doing this autologous transplant but again uh, the, the technique is different there is a, the bigger size of the membrane the bigger size of the graft has been taken and has been placed over this uh, you know macular area vis-a-vis -vis what we are doing the exact size of the graft and you are putting it here the hypothesis here is that when you have an end-to-end -end contact of the two uh, neural tissue there is always a chance of you know aberrant regeneration to take place in this and that's why we have not used any viscoelastic agent over this area or neither there is any carbon has been used so that there should not be any you know hindrance in this in this area so let's have a uh, you know quick look of uh, different scenario how the multifocal ERG is behaving so this is a normal multifocal I mean I mean the the multifocal ERG in a normal case this is MS ERG in case of standard ILM peeling hole closed so this is this is ILM peeling uh, and uh, uh, plugged and this is the retinal graft case so uh, let's see in, in 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 one page this is a normal one this is a classic ILM peeling with hole closed this is a repeeling with plugging after failed uh, graft failed surgery and this is grafting after failed surgery so uh, yeah, we have a very limited uh, number of cases, but yes, one, once you are struck with your, uh, you know, cases where, where you, you have multiple options, so I think retinal transplant is a way forward to look into it. Thank you. Beautiful uh, technique you've shown. One question that came to my mind is, do you tuck in the edges of the graft uh, beneath the, uh, like, you know, the retina, the edges, do you tuck it in? Yes. Yes, okay. you, you need to tuck it with the gently, you need to tuck it. So the, yeah, the two, three things uh, is very important. One is uh, graft size. So you calculate preoperatively graft size, uh, increase it of 15% and then accordingly you take the size. We have a series of trifine starting from 400 to 1200 as of now we have. Second is uh, this trifination will be done under saline. Under air it is not possible. And then the transplant will be done under air Third point, we don't use any viscoelastic over there. We just tuck it over there and it stays very well. And uh, uh, fourth point is that we use gases. Silicon oil is usually, I don't use it. So these are a few, you know, uh, 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 tips just for the practice. Just one more thing, are the trifines available commercially? As of now, Epsilon is making it up. So this is on request, we are just making it up. Okay. So it is available commercially, but on request, it is we are doing it up. As because it is not uh, ready over the shelf, as because it is right. the, the right. Right. demand is not that high. I, I missed that part, which is the ideal size of, the, I mean, suppose the macular hole is around 600. So what will be the ideal size of so the retinal tissue? 15% like? of 600 is around 90. So okay. 600 plus 90, so we'll take around somewhere around 700 size. So we have a every 100 size of this uh, trifine. So you take the closure one of that 15% of close to that. Okay, so so it's a little bit bigger and you make sure that it... Uh, it uh, you, you just tuck it. Tuck it inside. Yeah. Okay. So, the, so that there may be, I, I don't have any intra-op, uh, you know, OCT, so that uh, probably I could have documented it up there, that right. there is a, a, you know, there may be a little, initially there may be the graft inside is a little maybe uh, undulated or something like, uh, you know, once you uh, stuck your things a little uh, your si uh, bigger size, then again automatically it goes, graft shrinkage occurs and it goes back. So uh, the subretinal migration, I, I think you had some. Uh, the first case has subretinal migration, second case has a graft loss. So those two cases I have, I, I had taken the initial same size. Okay, it's the size which was responsible. So size which was responsible for that, probably the graft shrinkage. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so I have uh, 400 to 1200 as of now available. Every 100 micron size. Okay. Thank one you. Th one thing I wanted to know the um, gauge of the trifine. Is it 23 gauge? The trifine that we are using for trifining the graft. Is it 23 gauge? That's what. Like it is not 23 gauge. Yeah. So it is uh, the size. So you need to enlarge one port. So depending on size, it you, you cannot go through the 23 gauge. So initially I thought that yes, you can do it with that. So initially I have planned with the pronged one. So in a screwed way. So you go inside and increase the size. So then you have to have a three sprung I, I initially designed for that. But once you have a three sprung, which has, suppose if you have a 600 size, which is, you know, when it is closed, it causes a 600 size of size. And now you have a 800 size. So you need to increase it of in, inside. So once you increase, there is a gap between the sprongs. And once you have a 
gap, then you cannot have a proper trephination. So you have to, for that, you have to have a solid circular thing. Now the next question comes, I was expecting the question, so key, uh, why, why not a choroidal bleeding is occurring? Like the amount of the bleeding, what you have seen is, this is exactly the amount of the bleeding. So this is actually, the trephine has a, a catch inside of 400 micron behind it. So even if you press it, it will not go behind 400 micron. So that is, that is another stop is there. The risk of RD because of uh, the drug? Uh, because we is, you are using only gas in that. It is a superior one and attached retina and you are doing uh, mm, uh, laser to that. The chance is very less. So do you take within the arcade from where do you take admitted? Within the arcade, the difference, uh, the dif difficulties is that it depends upon your size. So if you have a, four, uh, a 900 size of, uh, like 600 size of hole and you are making a 900 size of hole within the arcade and then again you do surrounding laser, which goes very close to your uh, macula. So I don't prefer of, uh, I do it uh, outside of uh, arcade, that's why. Now the next question comes ki whether the what is the photoreceptor density of uh, outside the you know arcade, but still it is a retinal tissue, which is which supposed to be better than only ILM. The idea is that. Thank so you. For want of time, we'll stop the discussion now, and yeah. I'll request Dr. Anirudh Maiti for his presentation. Thank you, Dr. Rupert.